Good morning, my dear friends. It is so good to be with you all on this Transfiguration Sunday as we celebrate and worship together the day that Christ went up the mountaintop and was transfigured by a great light. Dear friends, it's so good to join with you. If you're joining us for the first time, a special welcome to you uh, here to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. We hope this to be a place where you find rest, where you find a community that uh, loves you for who you are and where you are in your life's journey. So welcome to you. A couple brief announcements before we begin our worship service. The first is, if you can't believe it, it is almost Lent. Uh, this coming Wednesday on the 17th, we will have coming out for you an Ash Wednesday devotional service. It's not gonna be too long, and of course, we're not gonna have imposition of ashes, again, because that involves being in person and touching foreheads and, and so forth. So while we'll certainly miss that, uh, we do hope that you can find that okay online. So please look for that coming out. The next uh, piece I think is a really exciting uh, thing to again continue to announce, which is we have begun uh, the process of installing uh, new cameras and lighting and software in our uh, congregation here in the sanctuary in order to live stream uh, you know, our services as they're happening. Um, if you've heard uh, during the uh, annual meeting that we had for budget and finance, that was announced. But now we've, we've turned from you after the uh, over half the amount was ceded by the endowment. We're, we're looking to uh, you all to, to see if, if this is something you're excited about and you want to uh, participate in, in ensuring that we have this ability, not just during a pandemic, but in the years to come, being able to reach people without I mean, you can't see it here, but there's a light here and a camera here that I'm speaking into without this being in the way when we eventually return to in-person worship services. So if you're interested in um, uh, adding, uh, adding your support in by making a donation, you can just write live streaming um, on a check or of course uh, through, through online giving with the information that comes up after my announcements or, or before, I'm sorry, I can't remember if there's a screen there, you can pause on and write down the giving information. Um, you could also give online, just make a, a careful note uh, or, or make the selection for the live streaming uh, and that should be no, no trouble. So thank you for that. Finally, again, this is another uh, financial <laughs> uh, announcement. We are still uh, taking uh, pledges for the year ahead. We're still early enough on to do that. Of course, we welcome pledges at any point. Uh, but thank you so much to all of you who have pledged for the year ahead. It really helps give us a solid uh, rock and footing uh, for, for planning our ministry here and making sure that we can meet our obligations uh, not just to people like staff and to upholding the building, but also our, our desire to, to give uh, to the community, to the Synod, and so forth. So thank you for doing that. Uh, you can send those in to the office, or you can also email uh, Ms. Burrell in the, in the front office, and, and she'll help you out with that, too. With that, my dear friends, let us jump into worship, and let us uh, have a joyful morning as we celebrate together this great day in our church year. Let's sit back and listen to this prelude together.
we begin with our call to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another in this moment of silence together. If you'd please join me in the public confession. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent and your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us of all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, we begin now with lifting our voices up for our gathering hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, which will come up for you right there on the screen. Please sing along.
Thanks for singing. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day as it comes up for you right there on the screen. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. I invite you to please read responsively. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. Here ends our psalm. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel lesson continues from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Change true change is hard. Anyone who has undergone a major transformative change in their life knows just how taxing it is. The loss of a job, of a loved one, traumatic illness, abuse, oppression, or any other number of experiences can precipitate a change that leaves us different than who we were before. Yet, as easily as we are changed by difficulty, we are not statically bound to it. We can also be transformed by love, by compassion, and, of course, through faith. Sometimes when we hear the transfiguration story of Jesus, we get the impression that there was some transformation that occurred some monumental moment and shift in who Jesus was that would change Jesus' ministry from that point forward. Well, I hate to be the guy that throws some shade on that idea, but it's simply not true. Jesus did not go up the mountain to become someone different than he already was. And he did not leave the mountain transformed either. He went up to pray and to be close to his Father in heaven. There was no major change to who he was. He still remained fully God and fully human, still the Son of God, still a Savior, a healer, and of course, a teacher. A moment where his countenance changed and his clothing became dazzling with bright light in such a way that no one could bleach them so white 
was but a change of his appearance. Even if he, we want to believe that it was something more, we sometimes confuse when we think about this transfiguration with transformation. But the reality is transfiguration is a shadow of transformation, a facade, a skin deep change. If we really want to look at what is most important about this story, we have to look past Jesus' appearance. Indeed, we even have to look past the disciples who really in that moment could only marvel at his physical change and could not see that who he was in the inside was no different than who and what it was before they went up that mountain together. They wanted him to stay there with him, with Elijah and with Moses, because they foolishly thought something was different than before, and they were afraid to lose it. Seeing, for them, might have been believing, but faith in who he was would have been far more transformative for them all. Now, we have to look past them, because if we're honest, they didn't quite get it. We have to look past them and look at ourselves to see if we can be moved past transfiguration to true, true transformation ourselves, true acceptance of the profound reality of who Jesus is and what he brings to our lives. Anyone who has lived with depression knows you can make a change to your environment you can make a change to your appearance. You can wish that things have been different in your past, in your present, or in the future, but nothing will alleviate your unhappiness if you can't find peace within yourself. Happiness is found within, not from outside. It was a similar kind of advice that I received from my first chaplaincy supervisor, who upon hearing of my pending marriage offered me some unsolicited but good advice. Derek, he said, don't expect Ashley to make you happy. Expect her to support you, to help you grow, and to be your best self. But remember, happiness is something that you will need to find within yourself. You alone are responsible for that, and no one else. Great advice. He was right. And intellectually, we all know that. We know that no person can change what we're feeling on the inside. We need to work on that ourselves. We need to learn to put aside the false feelings that we have inside us and grow into being who we truly are as siblings to one another, as children of God, but also as people who love themselves. So what then does this transfiguration event really mean to us all these years later? Why is it such an important story for us to retell each year? I'd offer it's not important for us to see Jesus' face and clothes shine with his divine nature. It's not important for us to see that Moses is there or Elijah or for that matter the very voice of God echoing on the mountaintops. Those are all nice things that can edify our belief that Jesus is God but really, we're supposed to take that on faith anyway, aren't we? No, I think what is most important for us today is to look at Jesus as an example by continuing to be who he was before this story. A loving God, a teacher, a prophet, 
a Messiah and someone who believes in us and is pulling for us to be our best selves. The only way to live up to who Jesus truly is is to look inside ourselves and see ourselves as we truly are. We are not the fallen humanity that our theology sometimes teaches, that is hopeless and helpless to exist as anything but that. How much of our internal identity is not real? How much of it is built upon how we appear or what others have said we are or aren't? It's no wonder why so many of us are so dissatisfied with the way that we feel about ourselves or angry because we are told by the world around us and sometimes even historically by the church that we are in need of some kind of transfiguration or transformation for us to be worth our salt. It is so hard to be happy when we can never reach a bar because it is set with impossible standards. It's even harder still to reach that bar when we tell ourselves we're not good enough to even start trying when it matters. So do me a favor. Close your eyes just for a minute. Think about how God created you. Do you think God would have made you so terribly flawed that you never would stand a chance to bring happiness to others or to experience happiness yourself? Do you think God would make us to be anything other than beloved and filled with the most incredible potential that is just lying there within us? In Genesis, to remind you, we are told that God created us in God's own image. What does that mean? Do you think that God just meant physically we bear a resemblance? Or do you think the authors of Genesis meant in our, capac uh, our capacity to be loving, compassionate, and truly do our part to bring about the kingdom? Do you think God made us only for us to have to this need to be immediately transfigured or even transformed, or because we're already made good. My friends, I think the greatest transformation we have to go through is to accept that we are made and loved wholly by God, without need for some transfiguration that is only shallow in appearance without need of any change other than to dwell on what God already made us to be that is fulfilled through Christ. And you have that in you. We all have it in us. We need to believe in ourselves as much as God believes in us, whether as individuals or as a church. When you love yourself, the miracle is you love others better. Start with yourself and you, as we discussed last week, will want to pass it on. Join me today in giving thanks that we are already filled with God's love. And together, let us share that news with others so that they too can know that joy. You are wonderful, made wonderful and loved by God. Amen.
with the whole church throughout the ages. Let's confess our faith by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Dear God, help us to move beyond the mountain, beyond transfiguration, to the transformation that is possible through recognizing what you have already made us to be. Your son's refusal to stay on the mountain and to remain unchanged is a sign to us of what lay within him. Through faith in him and the faith he places in us, help us to bring his love to the world through our love of who we are made to be and our love of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of all people, we stand together as a nation and world as we continue to mourn and remember over 470,000 people our siblings who have died of COVID-19. And we turn our hearts further abroad as we mourn nearly two and a half million souls. We join together to face this calamity and we give thanks to all who are worked tirelessly towards its end and the care of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray that you transfigure our hearts into open vessels for your loving spirit. Help us to hear the words of Jesus so that through his teaching we might be people ready to help all nations. Open our eyes to behold the majesty of your presence in the world, lest we fall down ourselves in fear. Even if our eyes do shut from the brilliance of your grace and power, even if we were to be overshadowed by your heavenly glory, we still would know you as our, as our Lord, who is made, dear God, in your image. In him and you, in the Holy Spirit, we place our trust. Let your light guide us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And dear God, we continue to pray for this community and all our families and friends. We pray for those who have died, including Jean Martin, godmother of Grace Hansen Gilmore. We pray for those who are in hospice, including George Sung, and Mary Wisniewski. We also continue to pray for our extended family in Christ who are in need, including Carol Van Odenarn, baby Stella, and Bruce Harvey. Continue to strengthen and comfort them, dear God, and offer their families assurance in their times of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, who looks into our hearts and knows us better than we know ourselves, you know the prayers that are most important to us. Hear them now in this moment of silence together. We follow your lead, dear God. We follow your teachings out of love for this world. And so we can commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and praying as our Lord has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, thank you as always for joining us this morning. 
I hope to see you at our fellowship hour that's coming up just shortly. That does come out through your uh, listserv notification with the Zoom link. Hopefully we'll get our new website up soon too, so you'll find direct links there for many of these different things that we do in our programs of the church. But in the meantime, dear friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you each with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and give you his peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and to love one another. Take care. Thank you.